right, so we will start with the bias binding. What we are going to do is take our 16 inch square. We are going to mark from one corner to the other without a ruler. And we are going to cut that into two triangles. Once the two triangles are created, we are going to spin one round so that it is facing that way. We are going to take the one that looks the same and flip it. And we are going to line them up across the bottom edge, leaving a one inch clearance on each end. So you'll have a one inch overhang on each end here where you will have a tiny little triangle poking out. And we are then going to stitch a what quarter inch seam allowance the whole way along this bottom edge. Once we've stitched that quarter inch seam allowance, we're going to open this out and we are going to press this edge back. I like to do this with my thumbnail. You can do it with an iron, whichever you prefer. We are then going to spin this diamond, stretch diamond shape sideways so that we have got this seam running upwards. We are then going to cut on the diagonal two and a quarter inch strips. We are going to lie them across each other like this, extending a quarter inch each end and stitching each section a quarter inch. We will then join all four together the same way and that is how you create your continuous bias binding that is two and a quarter inches wide so that when it is folded in half it can be used as a double fold bias binding. So once you have made your continuous bias binding, what you then want to do is make your quilt sandwich for your soles of your slippers. This here, I have got a layer of denim facing outwards on the bottom, two layers of cotton batting, one layer of bag making foam, and then another layer of quilting cotton. This I've already started quilting at three quarters of an inch apart or thereabouts. I'm going to finish quilting the other side and then what we will then do is trace the sole of the slipper onto the panel that we've created and we will then stitch around the perimeter of that before we cut out the pieces which seals the edges for the slipper. We will then move on to quilt a separate piece of foam, a lining cotton and a outer cotton, quilting cotton. Um, this will then be the part that creates the top of our slippers as so and we will trace off these and stitch around the outline to seal the edges the same as we will do with the soles. So I'm just going to finish quilting this and then I'll be back to trace off the slipper pattern on here. I will then stitch at one eighth of an inch the whole way around and I'll be back with you after that. So I'm going to trace around the edge of my slipper pattern just with a marker pen, this will be hidden in the seam allowance, so I'm not really bothered if it shows. It's just so it's nice and clear for when I'm stitching this part here. I'm going to flip it over and repeat. And then I'm going to stitch at one quarter, uh, sorry, one eighth of an inch the whole way around the inside of that line. So as you can see, I have stitched around, which is why there's an indentation in it. I'm going to cut this out now on both sides and I will then have my sole pieces prepared. I'm going to repeat the process with the upper parts on the other quilt sandwich that I've got here and then I'll be back with you. So we have now ended up with two soles, two uppers and all of our bias trim to finish completing these. Just transfer the markings where the upper lines up with the sole so that you can pin them into place in the relevant marking. So we will start by binding this upper edge here, the straighter edge on the upper parts of the slipper. What you want to do is take your bias binding, start on the rear of your upper, Fold your bias binding in half, match it to the edge and stitch at a quarter inch 
from the edge. Just keeping a nice even tension on the binding. And then what I'm gonna do is just trim that off, flip that binding to the front using a stiletto. I'm gonna hold that in place and I'm going to top stitch that edge of the binding. I'm going to trim my edges down so that I have a nice neat finish. And that is how you bind that top edge. We are going to bind the whole of the outside slipper in the same way, but I will show you that when we get there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our sole and our upper that corresponds to that. We're going to line up the edge with that outer mark. Start on the outer edge because it always works out neater. Work our way around and just clip this upper the whole way around to the sole. Just gently easing it in around the curve. And then what we're going to do is stitch this outer edge at just under a quarter inch. There we have the main shape of the slipper. We are now going to bind the outer edge and that is one finished. So take your binding, fold the top over by about an, uh, three quarters of an inch. Just fold it in half so you have a neat edge on the top. Apply this to the back of the slipper. I like to start about an inch down from where the upper meets the lower. And what we're going to do is start by stitching this down at a quarter inch the whole way around making sure that you keep a good tension on this binding to especially around the curved areas <laughs> Once you get back to where you started, if you overlap by about five eighths of an inch, and then you can trim that off. We will then flip this double fold binding and roll it to the front of the slipper the whole way around making sure to press out all of those curves with your finger as you go. This will then give us a nice neat finish to the final slipper. Roll the binding back. And then what we are then gonna do is starting at the very beginning where we started on the underneath, we are gonna make sure that the neat edge here covers the binding. And we're gonna use the stiletto to make sure that we can pull the binding over nice and neatly and get it all even as we top stitch it down. So I'm going to pop that under. I'm just going to drop my needle. I'm going to tuck all my loose threads into that binding as well, just so it gets rid of all the possible messy ends. Back stitch over my join. And then I'm going to gradually work my way around.
trim off any loose threads. And there you have your completed slipper. So we will now repeat the process for the second one and we have a finished pair. Thanks for watching. Thank you.